the kind that likes to listen and not write, then uh, just do that. We're going to turn to Philippians chapter 2 tonight. Philippians chapter 2. We've been looking at what I, I think are some very practical areas of the Christian life uh, on Sunday night, the last few weeks. We, we started with looking at what's often called self-image, which really is trying to understand how God sees us. Now, that's the important thing. It's not the self part that's important. It's how God sees us. And then we looked at having a clear conscience. You know, that, that can make a lot of difference in your Christian walk if you have a clear conscience before God and man. Uh, we looked at forgiveness. Uh, we've looked at uh, chain of command last week. Uh, God's authority and then the ones that He puts in authority over us and how we, how we respond to them. Well, tonight we want to look at yielding rights. You, you'll see what we're talking about as we get into this. Really, it, it's talking about submission to God, uh, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You've had it happen, I've had it happen, where you get angry or hurt when somebody crosses the line. You know, they violate our, our rights or, or they damage our reputation. We've all had it happen. We've done it. We've experienced it from both ends. Uh, one person wrote this. Let me see if I can read it to where you can understand it right. If I feel bitterly towards those who condemn me, as it seems to me unjustly, forgetting that if they knew me as I know myself, they would condemn me much more, then I know nothing of Calvary love. <laughs> uh, I just thought that was an interesting statement to, to include here tonight. What we're talking about is, uh, you know, just letting the Lord work with us as we are and, and uh, letting Him be the Lord and, and us following Him. I'm going to read Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 5, and read down through verse 11. Very familiar portion of Scripture, uh, and, and rightly so. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We'll just stop reading there. Uh, the subject tonight, yielding our rights, I want to start by giving you three examples. And of course, the first one is the Lord Jesus himself. Uh, you, you know, as you look at the life of Christ, uh, think of all the things he went through. You know, he was uh, accused, he was cursed. He was beaten, he was betrayed, he was killed. And the reason this happened to him was that everything he said was true and he had not a single flaw or sin. Now you want to talk about being unjustly treated. Uh, the example is there of the Lord Jesus Christ. And understand this, Jesus actually has rights. <laughs> you and I often claim things that aren't really our rights. We just think we deserve them. J Jesus is God. He has rights. And he purposefully laid them aside to accomplish the will of God. He laid aside his rights. That's what it's talking about in verse 7. Made himself of no reputation. And then he, he accomplished what God intended. Now, he is God, so there's no problem there. And we need to remind ourselves God always has a purpose. God always has a purpose. And then the Bible says he's exalted again. Wherefore, verse 9, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Jesus spoke about this in, in John chapter 17 when he said, Now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now, see, Jesus wasn't grasping for glory. He laid that aside. And then he was restored to, to what he uh, had been before. He laid aside his rights. Another good example is the Apostle Paul. And if you would, go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 16. You can just listen or you can, you can read along with me. Acts chapter 16. Uh, it seems like just a week or two ago I, I used this instance in his life in another message. But anyway, Acts chapter 16, verse 16. It's when he was in um, Thyatira. And the Bible says it came to a pass... 
as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Now, in case you need a translation of that, here's a demon-possessed woman, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them in the marketplace unto the rulers. Uh, just stop reading there. Uh, so here's the situation. Paul is just serving the Lord. He's just going about his business. And uh, this, this woman follows him around, you know, yelling and, and carrying on. And so Paul does actually a good thing. He casts the demon out of her. You know, nowadays they'd probably say, oh, she had mental illness or, or something. But the Bible says she, had a, she was possessed of a demon. And he casts that demon out. And all of a sudden she can't tell fortunes anymore. So they've, they've lost their, their money maker, and basically he gets arrested. So that's the situation. And then, verse 20, they brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. Uh, they attack their reputation. They weren't troublemakers. They were just going about their business. That woman had been harassing them, and they'd done something good for her. But their reputation is attacked. Then in verse 22, man, this is hard to imagine. The multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Uh, their rights are denied. Uh, they're basically abused by the whole, whole place there. And Paul recognized that, because later on, verse 37, when they want him to go away quietly, he says, they've beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. Now they do thrust us out privily. Nay, verily, let them come themselves and fetch us out. And he knew they'd been mistreated. But I want you to notice something. Look at his response here in verse 25. Now, I know how I'd respond. <laughs> I'd have been down in the dumps. But verse 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Wow, you know, don't, you, don't you wish you could respond like that? Don't you wish I could respond like that? Uh, what a great testimony of a person who'd set aside their rights and just whatever the Lord brought along, they were, they were happy to receive it. And pretty soon, they began to see why that was happening. Verse 26, Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Anyway, to cut, cut a long story short, the, the, the keeper got afraid that the prisoners were going to escape. He was going to kill himself because they would have killed him anyway. And Paul said, no, don't kill yourself. We're all here. And he called for a light in verse 29. And he sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Here was God's purpose. Here was this man who, in, in Philippi, you know, he later on would have been part of the church at Philippi uh, that uh, God wanted to reach. And Paul had called himself a servant of the Lord. You know, you don't check with the servant what his time schedule is, do you? You don't check with him what he wants to do. You just tell him. Off he goes. And uh, Paul was there doing what the Lord wanted. And the result, verses 31 and following, they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. That's not saying you're saved just because somebody else gets saved. It says they all believed. They all got baptized. They all trusted the Lord. Now, here's a person, Paul, who had set aside his rights. He just gave them to the Lord, and God used him in, a, in an amazing way. Now, some of you may have heard this next story. It's a, it's a modern story. Uh, if you're interested in reading it, it's called The Pineapple Story. A missionary in Dutch New Guinea, oh, not, not that long ago. Um, he, uh, 
ministering there, and he hired some people to plant pineapples. I, I don't know why you'd do this. And I'm told that it takes three years for pineapples to, to come to fruit. So he was waiting and waiting for these pineapples three years while he ministered. Man, they were looking forward to pineapples, you know. And they were just ready, just about ripe. They were going to pick them the next day, and they were all stolen. Well, of course, he figured it's the natives that stole it. He was quite angry about it, so he closed the clinic. Well, with no clinic, the people thought we might as well go somewhere else, so the people start to leave, and he doesn't have a ministry. So he opens the clinic again, and they continue to steal the pineapples. So he finds out that the main people stealing it were the people he hired to plant them. Their rule is, I plant it, I eat it. <laughs> So he has them all pulled out, and he replants. Another three years. Their juices are flowing. They're thinking, man, pineapple, pineapple. And they're stolen again. Well, this time he thinks, I'll get some Alsatians. He gets some fierce dogs. The people hate them. They start to leave again. No ministry again. It's at this point in his life that he learns the concept that we're talking about. Yielding your rights to the Lord. And he realized that he needed to give those pineapples to the Lord. And so he prayed and, and gave the pineapples to God. And the people kept stealing the pineapples, but they began to get puzzled because he wasn't getting angry anymore. In fact, one of the natives said to him, have you become a Christian? <laughs> Why don't you get angry? <laughs> he said, well, it's not my garden anymore. Oh, is it yours? Whose is it? He said, I gave it to God. They were kind of unhappy with him when he said that. Because now they realized they were stealing from God. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have given that to God. Uh, but they quit stealing. And he began to share them with them. And they began to listen to his preaching. And they began to get saved. You see, he had to yield that, that right. And God gave it back to him as really, you might say, as a, as a privilege, just like Jesus. You know, God, uh, Jesus came, he gave up his glory. He accomplished what God intended, and he regained his glory. Uh, this man gave up his right. He accomplished what really he had come to do. He hadn't come to raise pineapples. Uh, one of the, hit, the stories of Hawaii, if you know, if you've ever heard of Hawaii, uh, a lot of missionaries went there. A lot of them end, ended up running pineapple plantations, unfortunately. Uh, not, not the same story, but they, they got away from what God wanted to, them to accomplish. Uh, you know, we, we can learn this same lesson. Uh, we can give our rights and reputation to God. And I've, I've got some things I think that, that will help you there in the notes. Uh, you need to, first of all, identify the rights involved. And, and a good way to do that is recall what makes you angry. You know, in life, there's, there's just some things that, that bother us more than others. Uh, for the missionary, it was the pineapple stealing. I don't know what it might be for you. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, when someone disrespects us, uh, we think, I have the right to respect. Uh, this is something I have to deal with almost every time I go door knocking. <laughs> I have to remind myself, uh, no one owes me respect. Uh, they didn't give respect to Jesus. They didn't give respect to uh, all, many of these great men of God. Uh, you know, sometimes that, that can be it. Uh, people lying about you. People excluding you. Sometimes people are even angry at God for how they made him, how, they ma how he made them, or what he's done. One family was looking at this concept, and, and they, uh, they made a list of things that they got angry about, things that they thought were their right. Uh, the right to express opinions without being jumped on. The right to privacy. Sometimes that's something that can annoy you in a home. The right to plan their free time. The right to choose friends. The right to the use of their own personal property. <laughs> that sounds like a, some, a sister borrowing their sister's clothes, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, recall what makes you angry. And uh, it, it'll help you to see what rights that, you, that we're talking about. And then consider the concept of transferring those rights to God. You know, we, we often talk about this kind of thing, but usually we use the word lordship. And we don't often relate it necessarily to specific Item. Sometimes we, we talk about stewardship, uh, but we're just talking about recognizing uh, God's ownership in our life. 
A great example of this in the Old Testament was Abraham. Remember Abraham when God said, Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son, that you love. And I want you to take him and make a sacrifice. Now we know the story. God didn't, didn't require, but will it, Abraham was willing. Abraham uh, recognized God's ownership in his life. Uh, I've given you uh, some things there that uh, might uh, make a difference to you. Some examples of things that we might need to give to God. One is our reputation. Our reputation. You know, it's hard when somebody tries to damage our reputation. When we feel, you can feel quite helpless. There's a, a verse in the 23rd Psalm, Psalm 23, verse 3, where he says, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Remember that verse? For his name's sake. Uh, you know, we can live instead of for our name, we can live for his name. Now, sometimes it's possessions that might cause us trouble. I don't think there's a greater example than that of Job. Remember Job, how just one thing after another, God allowed it to be taken away from him. And here's what Job responded. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's Job chapter 1, verse 21. Uh, Job understood. Hey, we come with nothing, we're going to leave with nothing. Um, and you can tell how much you value possessions by ha how angry you get over their mistreatment. And, and sometimes we get real spiritual and we say, you know, we, we want to teach them honor and, and so on. And, and sometimes that's true, but uh, the main values we need to consider are, are our own. Sometimes it's time. If you've ever had someone interrupt your schedule, if time is yours, then you're going to be upset when I ruin your schedule. Uh, give God your time, and you'll have more time for, for people. Some of the best things that will happen in your life are things that you haven't scheduled. Uh, some of your best opportunities for reaching people for Christ are, are not ones that you'll plan. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 23 and, and verse 11, he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Now, I mentioned earlier, you know, a servant doesn't decide about his time. Uh, his master does. Sometimes it's money. Uh, you know, we, we need to be careful that we're not living uh, for money and that we're not valuing money and things above people. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You know, it's real easy to, uh, to think, well, I've, I've earned it, I deserve it. Uh, our health can be another one. Really, no matter how careful we are of our health, uh, really it comes from God. And God expects us to take good care of the things He gives us, but uh, uh, Paul had a health problem. And uh, he said he asked the Lord three times. It's, it's 2 Corinthians 12 and verses 8 and 9. And uh, the Lord's answer was, My grace is sufficient for thee. He didn't say, Yes, Claim it and it'll be yours. No. He said, my grace is sufficient. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. He said, Paul, I have a purpose in your health problem. And here was Paul's response. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You can see there's a lot of things we could talk about tonight. Specific physical uh, things. Uh, uh, music could be one. In a lot of different ways. I remember hearing of a lady who really wanted to be a singer. She wanted to sing for the Lord. She wanted to sing publicly. But nobody ever asked her to sing. So she decided she could sing privately for the Lord. And she would get out her songbook, and she would just sing for the Lord. And you know, really, if that's our goal, a crowd, an audience of one is really all you need. Now, what a blessing it was to, to hear that. Sometimes it's our future uh, that causes us to get angry. You know, we think, oh, this is messed up, uh, something that, that I've planned. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Put His kingdom first. You get the picture? Uh, we, we need to recognize God's ownership in every area of life. His lordship, our stewardship. You know, if He's the owner, if He's the Lord, and He gives us things to look after, then we need to be good stewards of what God has given to us. 
So uh, recall what makes you angry. Consider this concept of transferring those rights to God, and then do it. Transfer those, your rights to God. Uh, like the man with the pineapples. It just seems so trivial, doesn't it, really? You know, here's this guy going as a missionary. He's worried about pineapples. But you know how it is. You can get angry about the littlest things. And what it does is it shows our heart. Uh, he had to transfer the ownership of those pineapples to God. And it's done by a simple, sincere prayer. Uh, really what you're doing is you're putting that right on the altar. And be specific. If the Lord is, is bringing something to your mind, uh, transferring ownership really is an attitude, isn't it? It's not a, a legal contract, but it changes your attitude toward what you used to consider a right. You just give it to the Lord. And then, purpose to thank God whatever happens. This is really key because it shows whether you've really yielded that right to Him or not. If you're still getting angry about it, if you're not thanking Him, then you probably haven't really done what, uh, what you thought. Use future anger as God's alarm system. You know, anger occurs when we demand our rights. It happens all the time. You'll see it. Man, you drive around enough, you'll see it on the streets. People getting out and road rage and all kinds of things. Uh, anger occurs when we demand our rights. Meekness, hey, there's a good Bible word, is yielding our rights to God. Jesus said, blessed are the meek, and his explanation was, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You know what that says to me? Our blessing is still future. We're, we don't have to worry about all these little things now. now it, I, I'm not saying here that you don't be careful and be, uh, you know, uh, have character and ha how you deal with things. But we need to understand who the owner really is. Uh, this is not what, the things of earth right now are not what we're living for. We're living for eternity. Use future anger as God's alarm system. And then expect God to test his rights. You give something to the Lord, uh, very likely God will just check out how sincere you, you really are. If you still get angry, it probably wasn't really given in the first place. Someone has said, the problem with the living sacrifice is it keeps crawling off the altar. Um, expect God to, to test his rights. I, I've always recommended to people, and, and we uh, tried to do this, was uh, give your children to the Lord. You know, God gives us children, but really they're not, they're not really ours, are they? Uh, we, we raise them for the Lord. And uh, we might have them for a week, we might have them for forever, you know. But uh, uh, we need to understand why we're doing it. Give your marriage to the Lord. Give your, uh, your career uh, to the Lord. You know, one of the hardest lessons to learn is the lesson you thought you already learned. <laughs> God will just bring it, he'll run it by again. You know, you think, oh man, I've learned that lesson, and it comes by again. And, uh, you know, you just kind of have to yield that right all over sometimes. And one of, the, one of the things God is doing is God is teaching us inward qualities through loss of rights. God is teaching us inward qualities through loss of rights. You know, God wants your very life. Uh, he says in, in Luke chapter 9, and verses 23 to, to 25, again, very familiar portion of Scripture. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And when we think of denying ourselves, we think of something like giving up ice cream. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying deny yourself. Deny self. Take up his cross daily and follow him. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Listen, if you live for your rights, you'll lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. What is it for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? God wants our life. He doesn't just want our lip service. He doesn't just want words. He doesn't just want a part of our life. He doesn't want things from you. you know, God's got all the things he needs. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You know, Jesus is our great example, and God's purpose is making us like Jesus. You know, as we go through difficulties, as we suffer loss, well, it's, it's making us like Jesus. In Romans 8, 
28 and 29, he says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. See, that's God's purpose. It's His predestined purpose for your life that you be like Jesus. And He, he uses lots of things to do that. Uh, we looked at that diagram a couple weeks ago of the, of the, the hand you know, chipping on the diamond. You know, God uses things to, to chip away at our life and to make us like Jesus. And uh, Jesus was the, is the great example. Sometimes, like Paul, we're there for someone else. You know, God allows us to suffer loss and puts us in a place where we'll be a blessing to someone. And we have a friend who, for several years now, has been going through cancer treatment. You know, they, they think they're well, and then it springs up again. And, and he's the kind of guy, he, he just, uh, you know, when, he, when he's at the treatment place or the hospital or whatever, he's talking to people about the Lord. You know, God uses that as an opportunity uh, to serve the Lord. That's his place of ministry. He was a pastor, uh, not able to pastor anymore. Uh, but he has a, a ministry as, as he goes. Uh, sometimes, like that missionary with his pineapples, uh, God has to teach us something. Uh, so that then we can accomplish His will. God is always teaching us, and God always has a purpose. You, you need to know Romans 8, 28. Uh, all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. God has a purpose in your life. Let me give you one final thing. Be sure to distinguish between rights and responsibilities. Rights and responsibilities. We give our rights... To God. I mean, they're not really our rights anyway, are they? God gives responsibilities to us. And, and it's not right to say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this away when God has said, this is what I want you to do. Let me give you some examples. Um, it's, no, it, it's no good saying, I've given up my right to discipline my children. That's not a right. That's a responsibility. God tells us as parents to discipline our children. Uh, a student... It's not right to say, I've given up my right to good grades, so I won't study anymore. <laughs> now, you might give up your good grades, but you shouldn't do it by not studying. <laughs> uh, sometimes if you can study all you want, and you still won't get a good grade. But uh, your responsibility is to study. Uh, a husband can't say, I've given up my right to support my family, so I won't work anymore. That's not a right. That's a responsibility. And God expects us to, to fulfill it. Now, God can take away our ability you know, that can happen, and we, we just trust the Lord. Like the widow that we looked at this morning, you know, just uh, desolate but trusting God and continuing in prayer. But be, be careful not to, uh, to mix up rights and responsibilities. Uh, God gives us many responsibilities, and we need to fulfill those. But you know, when you think about this, this concept, uh, let it remind you of the Lord Jesus. Uh, Jesus left glory. He, he laid aside His glory. Uh, when John the Baptist saw him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. What was the purpose of a, of a lamb for in, in God's economy? It was to die, to shed its blood. And that's exactly why Jesus came. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, Jesus came and, and lived and died for us, rose again, and, and is back in glory now. Uh, here's... Here's the right progression in this. First, give yourself to the Lord. Then, deal with these other areas. Uh, don't, don't try and, and give areas of your life to God. Give your life to God first. Then let Him deal with the, the specifics. To know God is the most important thing. You know, Paul talked in 2 Corinthians 8 about uh, the church in Macedonia. How that they, uh, even in their poverty, they, they gave. And he, one of the comments he makes about them is, This they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. He said they went beyond what we even thought about. First they gave themselves to the Lord. And then they gave uh, for the Lord. You know, the question tonight really is, do you know the Lord? Do you know the Lord? Uh, in Philippians there, it talks about him uh, being the Lord. He's the Lord of glory. Philippians chapter 2, where, where we started. But you know, in Philippians chapter 3, in uh, verse 9, verse 8, he talks about that I may win Christ and be found in Him, 
not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is, which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Do you know the Lord? Is he your Lord? I don't think that by doing little religious things, you can make him your Lord. You've got to give him your heart, give him your life. Then, because you love him, you do these other things. And, and this thing of, of yielding rights, uh, first, give yourself to the Lord. And then, honor him as Lord in all these areas of, of life. Uh, this is a deep lesson, and uh, one that we need to apply over and over in, in our, our daily walk. I thought we'd end with the Psalm 153, I Surrender All. I'll get to Azrael to come and lead us in that song tonight. I hope that this made sense to you tonight and that you can apply this. Uh, take these notes home and, and let them uh, sink into your heart and uh, do business with the Lord on this.